I am Eric Armitage, and I am a painter. I used to work at the, the Rembrandt House for some 22 years, but now I'm giving workshops on how he made his paint, his painting, and also giving tours of where he lived in the city. And this is where the dam was, was built across the Amstel River, and that's where the city gets its name, Amstel Dam. The main locks that uh, shut up the Amstel River. Her garden looks nice. This was a sort of canal or moat that ran around the city, and there was a city wall, but also a wall in the city from there. And he sinks like a stone, straight onto the floor. So here we have the Stallmeisters, and this is a group of men that does quality control on fabrics. The stall is an actual sample of fabric that you use to, to check the bolts of fabric and Rembrandt has painted this group portrait for this, this, uh, the, the Stallmeisters and it would hang in this building here and that's where they did their, uh, their work. And just so we know that they're the group of um, the, the, the guild for the drapery people, at the top of the building you can see that the stones are carved with draped fabric. The little balls in the end are wrapped in what looks like fabric but that lets everybody know that this is where the uh, the stall makers were. So you have the servant in the middle that doesn't have a hat. And here we're on the Joden Breistadt with the famous Rembrandt house. So this is where Rembrandt lived and worked for almost 20 years. It's also where I worked for 22 years. So the second floor with the shutters there, that's where his studio is. And he bought this house because this house faces north. And this northern light is going to give you the best light for painting. It's not coming directly into the room. It's going to be nice diffused light throughout the whole day. And he's got four windows, so it's a very large uh, studio to paint in. And the first floor was his business. That's where he actually has a gallery and where he's going to be showing off his art. On the third floor, that's actually where the students are painting. So they're not painting in his studio, but they have their own separate studio to do their painting in. Think like this. Oh, you spent it all. is you don't scratch directly into the copper plate. What you're going to do instead is you're going to cover it with this waxy surface. And in that time, it's a combination of beeswax, pine tree resin, and asphalt powder. Take all the ink out. I'll use that just for the edges. And on the surface, I'm going to use my, my cheesecloth. This is built as a meeting hall. It's also built as a, as a lodging, so an inn for people to, to stay because there's no hotels at that time. And then as time goes on, um, you can see the tower is still left, but they just build on top of that to create more rooms for people to see. And this becomes the first hotel in the city, the, 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 the Doolin Hotel. And then in 1883, they go up one more floor, they take down the old city tower, and then they built this new tower here, uh, which is the grand staircase in the building. 
But just so everybody knows that this is where the Night Watch hung, they actually have the two main figures of the Night Watch here at the top on both sides of the clock. Actual piece of the old city wall from 1500. So when they built that building, um, they just built it on, connected onto that wall. So Remit has painted this as a commissioned work for this group of militia. So they're all portrayed here in this painting. And then he paints it at his house over in Jodenbreistrad, and then it gets hung here for the very first time. Lobanese Doolin, um, that had their headquarters at the, the Doolin, where the Doolin Hotel is now, and it was their job to protect that part of the city. So it's a commissioned work for these 16 people, and they've all paid to have themselves portrayed in this, in this painting. But it was unusual at that time because usually people wanted to have everybody just lined up in a row so everybody was recognizable. But Rembrandt paints this action scene. And the man in the middle of the France banning cock, his hand is extending out like he's directing the, the, the troops in the into some kind of battle. And then the person in the back that we were talking about. Yeah, they think that that's his wife. Um, because she's actually died um, before he's finished his painting. So we think that he's memorialized her by painting her in the painting as a, as a sort of mascot to the group. And that's why she has on her belt, she has an upside down chicken uh, with a pistol because the, the, the pistol and the <clears throat> chicken thigh is the sign of the, because there's only coat of arms of the Clovenese Doolin. So Amsterdam is a very biking city, so everybody has a bike. It's ridiculous to try and get around the city in a car. You have lots of electric bikes, women and children in their, on their bikes, one on the front, one on the back. But it's, it's definitely a, a, a great way to get around. And then we have these separate little bike paths, little kind of freeways for the bikes. So you don't actually have to be driving most of the time uh, with cars in the traffic. You can separate it from that. You can see by all the bikes lining the street. Baseball straight through the window. Uncalled for. So, this is one of the roads that has been uh, redesigned. So, um, it used to have parking on both sides of the street. And when they redesigned the street, they took away the parking and they just have bicycles uh, parking now on the one side. They have some cars parked on the other side. And then they've also added the planters, so they want to have more green in the streets too. Who lives up in that apartment? Chamomile tea. So this is actually what was at that location at the time. Um, before the war, or at the end of the war, it was, the, um, it was an incredibly cold winter, and all the Jews had been removed from the houses here and taken away to the death camps, so they were all left empty. And because it was so cold, people went into all these homes and they would take all the, the wooden windows and beams out of the houses to burn in their fires and their furnaces. At the end of the war, these were all these houses were just collapsing and falling down. And then in the 70s, it, it, it was still all abandoned, and they finally tore it all down. And then in the 1980s, that's when they built it. So this is the National Holocaust uh, Monument. Uh, it's called the, the, the Names Monument. And it's all the, the names of the 180,000 Jews that were moved from the country and taken away to the death camps. So the names and the dates of everybody here. And you'll notice all the little white stones around. And that's because uh, Jewish people don't believe in putting flowers in somebody's grave, um, but a white stone. So everybody's allowed to come and take one of these white stones and place it, place it next to one of their family members. It's the Moses and Aaron Church, and uh, it's one of the first churches that was built um, uh, after 1850, after they changed the law. Uh, where, where Catholics can now have their own churches and pray in public again. 
because in uh, 1578 uh, we had the Reformation, they kicked the Catholics out of the churches and they're not allowed to pray in public, they have to pray in secret. Gable fronts, and so you have what's called the trap gable or the step gable where you step up the little steps like that. That's about 1500. And then the next style is what they call a bell gable and that's where at the top it kind of swoops out looking like a bell. And then the next change in the style is when they go to what's called the neck gable. And that's the one with the more straight up and down sides and more of the um, stone carving around it. And you also have in the 1800s, people wanted to be more modern. And so what they did is they converted these houses into having just the flat tops. Beautiful color, um, but you also have to be careful with it. If you grind this one too much, it turns white. And then that sounds useless. Um, but you can take that white powder and you can sprinkle it into your colors, your already made up colors, and that makes them dry quicker. When you're adding the oil, you want to, and, and moistening up um, the particles, you want to do it so it's not fluid at all and that shiny, it's just kind of matte and everything sticks together. And then when you start rubbing it around with the glass color, then it sort of just naturally turns into paint. So if you're interested in one of my tours or one of my workshops, you can contact me at my website, um, www.rembrandtpaintmaker.com.